Recently, I've been getting asked by a ton of people on Instagram how I make posts like this and this. And that got me thinking about my entire post editing workflow, specifically for social media. So why not put together a little workflow video on everything I do after I click export in my photo editor. Actually, before I click export. Let's get right into it. Thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. More on them in a bit. So this is the photo editing software that I use. It's Capture One Pro, but you can do what I'm about to do in pretty much any other photo editing software. So I have my photo and this is a picture I took in Morocco. And let's say I am done editing it and I am ready to export it. Go over to export and we have export recipes. And basically these recipes are presets. So we have a 2048 for web use preset. Um, this is great for exporting high quality but low file size images that you could use on say your website or any other scenario where I want to share a photo on the internet. We have a full size highest quality preset which I use for um, my YouTube videos or any other scenario where I want the highest quality image I can get. And then lastly we have an Instagram optimized preset. I'll use this if I want to use an image for Instagram without any borders, so if I'm just uploading the picture itself. Now the only thing I've really changed with these presets is where the file is being saved to. So I save all my photos to the cloud. I use Dropbox for that, so I have a folder on my Dropbox called Web Optimized, and that's where this preset saves to. I have one called high res photos, that's where the high res photos save to, and I have one for Instagram. Um, so you can see that anytime I use these presets, it's being saved to an organized folder on my cloud, which is easy for me to access anywhere. When I'm done editing a photo, all I need to know is where the photo is going, where I'm sharing it, and maybe if it's for Instagram and my website, I can just tick both of these presets and it's gonna save to their respective folders on my cloud. And the best thing is if you're using Capture One, these are already made by default, so you don't have to do much work to get yourself using export presets. So let's say I wanna use this photo on my website. I'll just go to web use, export that, and it's gonna go right to that folder. I can open up Dropbox, and there you can see the photo I just exported is there. I can then open up Squarespace, which I use for my website. I've been using Squarespace for a very long time. They're a long time sponsor of the channel, but I've been using them for over six years before I even had a YouTube channel. But it's really the simplicity of Squarespace that has made me stuck with them for such a long time. You know, as someone who has not a clue about coding or website design, it's perfect for me. Mine has gone through its fair share of changes. I'm actually planning on doing another website rework um, sometime soon. We'll see when I get around to it. But I can just open the gallery here. I can take that photo I just used. It's a web use. So it's going to be a high quality image still, but it's going to be low in file size. So you can see it's only taking two megabytes of space. So it's going to load fairly quickly. All I need to do is take this photo, drag it in there, have it upload. I actually already have that photo on here already, but just to show you how it works with Squarespace. That photo is going to pop up there. I can delete this and we can see it right here on my page. So if you want to check them out, visit squarespace.com slash to start your own free trial. And if you want to make a purchase of your own, you can use the code Faisal at checkout and that'll get you 10% off your first purchase. Big thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. So there are a bunch of different ways that you can create borders like this on Instagram. Um, I'm using Affinity Publisher 2, but before this I used a free web-based app called Canva. It's a great alternative to this and you can pretty much do everything I'm about to do in Canva for free, so I highly recommend that. But if you already own Affinity Publisher, I'm going to be creating a template that you can use for free as well. I'll have it linked in the description. 
So what you basically see here is a template that I've created where I can take any image I have, drag it into, and instantly have a border post ready to go for Instagram. On the side here, it looks rather complicated, but it's pretty simple. Um, I can just close these groups and you can see I have a portrait post and a landscape post. So at its core, they're all similar in the way they're constructed. But before I get into that, it's important to note that the document size that I'm using for this is a 2160 by 2700 pixel document. And that's going to give me a 4K resolution vertical Instagram post. So back to the right, you can see in my layers, I have a group for landscape, portrait, small photo, and backgrounds. So if we open portrait, you can see I have two other groups, a 4x3 portrait and a 2x3 portrait. These are just two different ratios for how I like to crop images. I've been using 2x3 a lot lately, so you can open up the 2x3 portrait. This is the toggle on and off to view something, so I want to make sure I have this toggled on. And you can see here I have the 2x3 frame. This is the picture frame in which I drop an image into. And I also have a 2x3 black border and a 2x3 gray border. So I can toggle each one on and off. I also have a background group here, so I can have either a white background or a black background. Again, while this looks complicated at its core, it's pretty simple. I can turn this off and make it from scratch. Um, first, I'm gonna take a picture, a two by three image, put it in the center and use the picture frame rectangle tool. I'll then align it with that image so it's the exact same dimensions. I'll delete that picture and re-drag that image into that picture frame that I just created. And there you have it. Now, if you wanna make that gray border around the image, all I do is go to the rectangle tool, drag a rectangle across, then hold shift so it's staying the same dimension, drag it out a little bit, bring it behind the picture frame I created. I can then adjust this to the size that I like. I'm really just eyeballing all of this, to be honest with you. I'm just making sure that it's, you know, center in the page. So let's say I like that. I can then go to colors, make this a gray. And let's say I like that. There you have it. Um, just a quick and easy way to create a border post. Now, the key is that I use this same template that I just created. That way there's a consistency when I'm uploading. I'm not having different sized borders with every post. Rather than messing around with the layers and you know toggling things on and off here, I've actually just created separate pages that has you know my landscape posts um, this is a four by three landscape post also a two by three landscape post so it's just easy for me to go into this page and you know work with that file rather than toggling things on and off now when i want to export this i'll just go to export this window will come up and i want to make sure that i'm not doing all pages just the current page i'm working on and i'll always export at the highest quality that I can get. Again, I'll have a link in the description for you to download this and feel free to use it as you wish. But what about video posts? It's a bit more complicated. So if you go to my Instagram, you can see that there's these video posts that look pretty similar to the photo posts that I've been creating, right? Um, and while they look very similar, I use a completely different editor to make these. I use my video editor, which is DaVinci Resolve, but I still use that template in a way um, to create these. So what you see here is DaVinci Resolve. This is the video editor that I use um, to make these video posts, but it's also the video editor I use to make my YouTube videos. And you can see that I have some videos that I've just recently posted right here. And it looks just as if I'm using the same template in Resolve that I was just using in Affinity. 
And essentially what I use is one of the photos I made with that border from Affinity, brought it into Resolve and recreated it using these solid color generators. And that's why I say it's a little bit more complicated. So I'm gonna show you real quick how I did it. I'm gonna make a new timeline and I wanna make sure this timeline is the same resolution as that Affinity file. So it's gonna be 2160 by 2700. And that will give me a vertical timeline. So I'm gonna take the file that I was just working on in Affinity, bring it into Resolve, and there you go. So you can see this is the picture. It's just a photo in my timeline and it's filling up the entire page because it's the same resolution. So make sure effects is turned on, go to toolbox generators and choose solid color, drag that into the timeline and you can see it's black. So it's gonna cover whatever I just had there. I'm gonna go into settings, composite, opacity and bring this down maybe to like 50%. And now I can go over to transform and position this on the right side to align with where the gray border begins. I'm gonna duplicate it and make another layer and I'm gonna bring it over and do the same on the left side. So right where the gray begins. I can zoom in a little bit, make sure I get it exact. And I'm just gonna do the same thing for the top and bottom. Helps to make these a bit smaller so I have more room on my timeline. All right, so I just made the white borders, right? So I'm gonna select all of these and now change their color to white. Boom, so the white border is now done. I'm gonna do the same thing now for the gray border. I'm gonna bring in a solid color generator, take the opacity down 50%. I'm just gonna crop the right and the left and the top and bottom. Duplicate it and then drag it over to the other side and I'm gonna make the same for the top and bottom. Take your time with this and you know just try to make it as close as you can. It's gonna be a small image on Instagram so you're not gonna see the smallest little mistake here but um, it's worth trying your best all right, now we can change the color and we can type in that hex color for the gray that I was using. It was F1, F0, EF. Select all of the borders and type in F1, F0, EF. Make sure the opacity is 100%. Make sure these are all at 100% opacity delete this picture. Now that is basically the foundation of the same template I just created in Affinity. I'm going to select all of these, drag them out quite a bit, select them all and create a new compound clip. I'll just call this border. So I now have it all condensed into this one composite layer called border. So it's nice and clean. I can then grab any video I have drop it onto my timeline, make sure it's underneath border, and you can see it works pretty seamlessly. This is iPhone footage, I can delete this. I can take footage from my Sony a7 IV. It's gonna start off like this. So all I need to do for this footage is zoom in a bit, make sure it aligns, and I can adjust from left to right how I want this to be positioned in this little window I created. Making the video version is a bit more time consuming. So again, I'm going to export this as a DaVinci Resolve preset or template that you can download from my website for free. So you don't have to do all of this, but um, it's worth sharing how I did it just so you can create it yourself in whatever other you know, video editor you might use. 
All right, I hope he found this video helpful. I hope it was clear enough as well. If anything was confusing, please drop a question in the comments section and I'll try my best to get to as many of you as I can. So I hope this was helpful. I'll see you all in the next video. Bye.